So today we are going to look at a pediatric patient's EEG and the first thing we want to look at is this discharge right here. It has an odd polarity distribution. It does appear to be authentic, but the polarity almost seems perhaps nonsensical. Additionally, on this page, we also see drowsiness for the first six seconds, and then we see two or three eye blinks towards the end of this epoch. But right here, we see what appears to be a spike and then a sl after going slow wave, which is a signature of an epileptiform discharge, one of the signatures. We also see one right here, but the polarity we're going to try to make sense of. First, let's switch this to a referential montage, see if that makes a difference. Okay, so we've switched to a referential montage. It's an ears tied montage. That's A1 and plus A2 divided by two. That just dilutes the effect of A1 and A2. And if we look at this particular discharge, we're going to accept the premise or go with the premise that most brainwave discharges as recorded with scalp EEG are going to be negative. They're going to have a negative charge. That does not mean that there is not a positive component associated with that particular discharge. If you have a negative component to a discharge, you must have a positive component. It's just that the way the gray matter is oriented, and that is including the, the cell bodies, and the axons, and the dendrites, the way they are oriented with respect to the horizontal plane is that the surface electrodes are going to record the negative component. In most cases, there are exceptions. One exception is the normal variant 14 and 6 positive spikes. Another variant would be lambda waves as well as posts. Also, in neonatal EEGs, their epileptiform discharges and seizures, of course, so their ictal discharges as well, can have a chief or main positive component. Other than those, we expect to see a negative discharge. Moving along, we can see that there is a negative discharge at T4 during this moment, T6, somewhat of a discharge at O2, but not as high amplitude, just going to scoot over the sweep edge so we can see this waveform better. Also a field to P4, which is strong, so C4 is involved as well. Therefore, it looks like C4, P4, T4, and T6 are the complicit electrodes in this discharge. When looking at this particular discharge through the prism of the anterior to posterior bipolar montage, it is less apparent what the actual field is and the focus of this discharge is. What we are seeing and what is the main mechanism for the apparently nonsensical distribution of polarity is that there is a frontal dipole so this is one of the cases where the positive component is not radially oriented. Radially meaning the negative component is on the scalp and the positive component is deeper within the brain. This is a tangential dipole. Some of that owes to the way the Rolandic fissure folds in upon itself. The gray matter kind of curves down. So the gray matter and the cell bodies and the axons are oriented differently with respect to the horizontal plane as compared to discharges which are oriented radially or their dipoles are oriented radially. So we see a positive component to this discharge extending to FP1, F7, F3, FZ, even CZ, as well as F4, FP2, and F8. Now, how do we know that this is not contamination? Well, that's one of the reasons that I chose this particular referential montage as opposed to an average reference. Going back to the bipolar anterior to posterior montage, now we're just going to scroll through this EEG. And we're going to do a read of this EEG while also keeping an eye out for these spikes and sharps. Right. There is one right there. The dipole is not as apparent. And there is one there. If we work through the logic of the field distribution, 
within a bipolar montage, we can explain it as follows. C4 is more involved or closer to the originating signal or closer to the maximum of this particular discharge. So it is going to be more negative with respect to F4. Since it's an input 2, there's a downward deflection. It could be the case that C4 and P4 are equally complicit. Therefore, there is no deflection because input 1 minus input 2, essentially. P4, to, as compared to O2, there is an upward deflection. P4 is more negative. And then you can also see, if we turn on the artifact reduction for a moment, that there is a downward deflection in the F8 T4 channel. That is because T4 is complicit or contributing or is affected by this discharge. It's within the zone of the electrodes affected by this discharge. Therefore, it's an input 2 and there's going to be a downward deflection. We will go back to a default sensitivity and perhaps making sense of the left hemispheric polarity distribution will be more of a challenge nonetheless. So we went back to the double banana just for a moment to pick out a nice phenotypically robust example of this discharge. And we're going to work through the logic of why we see these particular deflections here. But before we do that, we will switch to an ears tied referential montage and we will snip out this. We're going to keep in mind that this particular discharge is most readily seen in T6, T4, P4, C4. In the FP1, F7 channel, the frontal region is more positive. F7 will be more negative than FP1, perhaps because the dipole is oriented. We're looking to stitch in or incorporate the logic of this positive dipole. And we see here that FP1 is really recording this positive charge. It's an input one, it's more positive with respect to F7, so there's a downward deflection. F7 itself is more positive than T3. It is closer to the maximum of that positive dipole component, so it's a little bit higher voltage. Not much at T3, T5. T5, O1 is showing a bit of an upward deflection. It might be picking up propagation from the field arising from the right centrotemporal region. So we've made sense of this first set of electrodes, the left temporal chain. We're again going to go with the premise that there is a positive tangential dipole over the frontal region. If that is the case, why is there no deflection at this moment over the FP1, F3 region? That is most likely because they are equally involved or equally, they are recording the same magnitude because of their placement. So they're equally complicit with respect to that positive dipole. You can even see this positive dipole extending to the C3, P3 channel, but F3, C3, F3 has a downward deflection with respect to C3 because it is recording that positive discharge. C3 is not actually complicit. It is not recording a negative discharge. It is the case that the dipole is being recorded by F3, so it's the case that C3 is recording some of that positive dipole. P3, there is an upward deflection because it is recording some of the actual sharp wave discharge, which is originating from the right centrotemporal. But as we can tell from looking over at the image here, there is certainly a field that extends to the parietal region. If we go to the midline set of electrodes, we can see that there is a downward deflection. That is not because CZ is the complicit electrode recording a negative discharge. It is because FZ is recording a positive dipole associated with this discharge. Since FZ is an input one, there's a downward deflection. Similarly, as CZ is compared to PZ, CZ is relatively close to this dipole, so it's going to be more positive at that moment in time as compared to PZ. As we move to the right hemispheric electrodes, we see a downward deflection, and the downward deflection is due to, in this case, C4 being really close to where the discharge is maximally represented over the scalp. C4 is more negative than P4, so there's going to be a downward deflection and P4 is involved in this discharge. So P4 is more negative than O2. So there's an upper discharge. So in this case, it's the fact that there's a phase reversal with C4P4 for this particular example 
sharing the same magnitude, recording the same voltage. So they're equally complicit. If we go down to the last set of electrodes, the right temporal chain, we can see this downward deflection that is deflecting downward for a different reason than the F7T3 channel is deflecting downward. The F8T4 channel is showing a downward deflection because T4 is really close to where that discharge is being maximally recorded over the scalp. But since it's an input two, there's a downward deflection. You can even see the aftergoing wave component clearly. And then in the T4, T6 channel, those are essentially recording the same magnitude with respect to this discharge. There's neither a deflection up or down. In T602, there is an upward deflection. This is because T6 is recording some of that discharge. Going back to our screenshot here of the ears tied montage, we can see that for this particular discharge, just to review, CZ, which is right here, has an upper deflection. PZ has an upper deflection. T4, T6 a little bit, but mainly it's C4, P4, and T4. We see a dipole at that moment in time over the frontal electrodes. Now we're going to look at persist and its spike review. And the algorithm at times will separate discharges that are apparently arising from the same focus. It will separate those into different clusters or compartments. For this particular discharge, we can see maximal at P4. The red with persist, the way the default settings are, represents negativity. The blue represents positivity. In a lot of programs, this is flipped, but in this case, red is negative. And we can see that in that right posterior region, maximally where the red is heaviest shaded, the most heavy shaded, we can see that chief negative discharge. Then we can see over the frontal region, a nice well, it's partitioned very cleanly, and then there is a positive component over the frontal region. If we are to look at, say, the average of 14 of such discharges, so if we look at this right here under P4, N equals 14, we see that P4, C4, T4, and even T6 are involved in this discharge. The one over here on the left is very similar to the P4N equals 14, it's just that persist is treating it as an average or generalized discharge, but you can still see that for all of these, so the third set T4, the fourth set C4, and the fifth set T6, they all have the same dipole distribution. The T4N equals 11 has a beautiful positive dipole of confined area, the circle right here. And then the first one also has a nice dark shading there. So this is showing you the clear dipole separation at this moment in time. If this were a radially oriented discharge, we would only see the negative component. The positive component would be deeper inside the cortex, the way it's oriented. All right, so if we look at a picture of the brain cortex, and this is the left side of the brain with the eyes would be on this side on the left. The occipital region would be here and the temporal lobe would be here. So if, it, if the discharge is radially oriented, then your electrode is gonna pick up the negative component and the positive component is gonna be deeper in the cortex. But for these types of discharges, as seen with selects or becks or what used to be called Rolandic epilepsy, the focus is oriented so that the negative is still near the surface and recorded but the positive component is also near the surface towards the front. And that's going to be the big difference in the dipole. Go back to a screenshot here and see that there were different clusters for this particular discharge. So we're going to finish up today by just reviewing the rest of this record. See a nice PDR, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine hertz at times. Here is another right centro parietal temporal discharge. 
and here are two which quickly follow each other. This particular one is an after-going slow wave, as does this one, so an epileptiform discharge should disrupt the background. Sometimes it's more salient than at other times, more easy to see. It's a nice one. So this unusual polarity distribution is due to the frontal dipole being so strong and how it is affecting the electrodes in the context of how they are arranged in this bipolar format over the left hemisphere. The reason for the downward deflection in the F7 T3 channel is not the reason for the downward deflection in the F8 T4 channel. In the F8 T4 channel, the reason for the downward deflection is that T4 is the complicit or involved electrode. It's more negative than at F8 because it's near the region where the discharge is being picked up on the surface. As it's in input two, there will be a downward deflection. If we look at the F7 T3 channel, there is a downward deflection because F7 is actually recording a positive voltage at that moment in time because of the dipole, the positive dipole, which makes T3 as compared to F7 more negative, there's a downward deflection. So over the right, the complicit electrode is T4. Over the left, the complicit electrode is F7. Although they look very similar, we can make more sense of this if we go to a referential montage. Okay, so here's a great example. Uh, this looks like three or so discharges in rapid succession. T6, T4, as well as C4 and P4 are involved in this discharge. There's a positive dipole over FP1, F7, a little bit at T3, strikingly so at F3, as well as C3, FZ, CZ, F4, and FP2. All right, that's it for today's module.